Next on Winning with Wisdom with Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. The only debt God allows you to owe is love. And the reason you owe it is because Jesus paid the price. Welcome to Winning with Wisdom, the anointed teaching ministry of Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. Not one time has he rejected somebody with faith. There's going to be a release of fresh fire and a spirit of boldness so you can declare the word everywhere you go. Dr. Nasser Siddiqui teaches you biblical principles to lead you out of lack and into God's abundant life of prosperity and success. God is no respect. He never denies faith. Stricken with an incurable disease and then miraculously healed by the power of God. The powerful ministry of Dr. Nasser Siddiqui is equipping God's people with wisdom principles to be successful in every area of life, marriage, family, business, and more. Touching the world, touching lives, touching you. This is Winning with Wisdom with Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. Welcome to Winning with Wisdom. I'm Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. This is another edition of Learning How to Get Debt Free. I am so excited about what I'm about to share with you in the Word. We've been studying about driving debt out of your life. Uh, come with me to 1 Corinthians 7.23. In 1 Corinthians 7.23, we'll find out what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 7.23, it says this, You were bought with a price. Hmm. Purchased with the preciousness and paid by Christ. Then do not yield yourself up to become slaves to men. We were never meant to be slaves to men. And you know, when you're in debt, you become, the Bible says, a servant to the lender. You were never meant to be a servant. You're supposed to be out of debt. A God, an abundant life, a life of a Christian, that Jesus came to give us, and he came to give us abundant life, was not a debt-filled life. It was one where you could pay cash for the things that you buy, cash for your car, cash for your home. You say, Brother Nasser, I could never do that, not on my salary. Yes, you can. It's not that we don't make enough money. It says that we're spending it. You can't spend more than you make. We're going to teach you some practical things, how to get your car paid off, how to kill debt. My brothers and sisters, how to cut back in certain areas of your life so there will be extra money to kill the credit card debt and then to kill the car debt and then to kill the mortgage debt. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could teach you in the next few minutes through this series how to get out of debt and then the next time you need a car or a house, you could pay it with cash. Is that really possible, my brothers and sisters? Oh, yes, it is. But the key is to do it God's way. Find out his way of doing things so you don't owe any man anything but to love him. Today, I'm going to continue our series, Driving Debt Out of Your Life. And as we study more Bible truths so you can walk in that freedom. Don't forget to come and join me in person as I travel across the nation imparting the revelation that God has placed in my spirit. Join me in a city near you or come to be part of a wisdom conference right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Visit our website, wisdomministry.org, for more information right now. Let me take you to one of our wisdom conferences, driving debt out of your life in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Then I will be right back to pray for you. And now, today's vital teaching from Dr. Nasser Siddiqui. Come with me to some scriptures. Let's find out what God thinks about debt. Deuteronomy 15, verse 1. Deuteronomy 15, verse 1. Let's dig into the Word of God and see what's going on here. Deuteronomy 15, verse 1. Hallelujah. Once you're there, say amen. amen. All right. Deuteronomy 15, verse 1. At the end of every seven years, you shall grant a release. Mm. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor shall release that which he has lent to his neighbor, he shall not exact it out of his neighbor, of his neighbor, his brother, for the Lord's release is proclaimed. Of a foreigner you may exact it, but uh, uh, whatever of yours is with your brother, your hand shall be released. 
So what does that tell you? As far as God was concerned, debt should never have lasted more than seven years. Debt should never have lasted more than seven years. And yet we get into a 30-year mortgage. Come on. That wasn't the will of God. In fact, Jesus came to proclaim the year of Jubilee. Do you remember what the year of Jubilee was? Restoration of everything that was lost because of debt. Everybody say, debt, debt. is not God's idea, not God's idea. For, his for His children. It was never His idea. Even in the Old Testament, it was seven years and you were out of debt. Seven years max, you're out of debt. Year of Jubilee, everything's restored. Now we go into 30-year debt. Something wrong with this picture. We stopped thinking the way God thinks. We started thinking the way the world thinks. Oh, we're going to do some mind renewal, my friends. All right, we can't go there. All right, every seven years there was total release of debt. Look at verse 6. When the Lord your God blesses you as he promised you, everybody say, God will do it. Then you will lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Whoa. We're supposed to lend and not borrow. Uh, what's going on here? We're borrowing, but we're not lending. What is the problem here? We're supposed to lend and not borrow. And you shall rule over nations. Everybody say, when I lend, when I, lend I, rule. I rule. When I borrow, when I borrow they rule. They I keep going. It gets better. And you will rule over many nations, but they shall not rule over you. Huh. They're ruling over us. And that's not God's will. My brothers and sisters, God did not want that for you and me. God has promised that you will lend and not borrow. That you will rule over nations. They're not going to rule over you. When you borrow, you are no longer ruling. You are the ruled. See, I told you, I'm going to make you despise debt. By the time I finish, you're going to know the, I think there's only four steps to get out of debt. Those steps are easy. But you know what? I can give you the four right now. You still ain't going to do it. Why? Because you don't yet despise it enough. When you can't live with it no more. When you can't sleep with it no more. When you can't allow it for one more day in your life. When you hate it. Oh, God don't hate things. Yes, he does. Read the Bible. There's certain things he hates. When you hate it with a passion. Yeah. Now you're going to do something to get out. Amen. And it's going to take discipline to do it. But you're going to do it to get out. I was in debt. I'm going to share all kinds of testimonies and stories of what happened in my life and what happened to me when I was in debt. And it was severe. I mean, I, mean, I lost it all. Every penny. I'll, I'll, I'll get to those stories this weekend. All right. When you borrow, you're no longer ruling. But you are the ruled. Come with me to Proverbs 22.7. Proverbs 22, 7. I did an extensive study on this and I was shocked at what the Bible says. Bless me, bless me, bless me with some more credit cards. No, no, that's not what we're talking about. All right. Proverbs 22. Now, what's interesting, look at, look at Proverbs 22, 7. Once you're there, say amen. All right. The rich, uh-huh, rule over the poor. Uh-huh. And the borrower is what? Servant, servant to who? Ah. The borrower becomes servant to the lender. Now, what's interesting, and we're going to dig into this in a few minutes. We're going to spend lots of time with this verse. But just go ahead and read the verse before. I want you to see what we're training our kids. Train up a child in the way that he should go. Uh-huh. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Everybody say, the way I live, way I live speaks, louder speaks louder than my words. Than my words. So exactly what are we training up our children? Go in debt. Go in debt. Go in debt. Go in debt. 
You can go in debt for your car. You can go into debt with your credit cards. You can go in debt with your house. You can go in debt because it's okay. What are we teaching our kids? Debt is okay. My brothers and sisters, debt is of the devil. That's why God didn't want you to be under it more than seven years. And then he wanted you to be totally released. Amen. We don't want to get under debt. And we don't want to train our kids this way. Kids, oh, yeah, well, you know, I can get it. I, I mean, I, I just can't believe. 21 years old, graduate university. By the time you're 22, 23, you're in debt to here. Why? Because you got a house. You got payments. You got a new car. And your friends are driving a nicer car, so you're going to get a nicer car. Hello. Keep up with the Joneses. Amen. Silk suits and debt to here. I've seen it in the ministry. I've seen it with pastors. Man, three months of a recession. Man, that church closing up. Why? Can't handle it. Why? Totally in debt. But they look good. Come on now. Uh, we don't need to look good. We need to be good. Amen. Amen. We need to do it God's way. Yes. And God has a way of not only meeting your needs, but he has a way of fulfilling the desires of your heart. Amen. Amen. The greatest miracle of all was when he saved you. Amen. Amen. My Bible says in Romans 8.32, don't go over there, if he would give you uh, his only begotten son, why would he not give you all things freely? That's without a debt. Amen? That's what God wants to do for you and me. But it ain't never going to happen till we change our thoughts. We got to change our mindset. We got to think differently now. We got to look at it at what it is. And until you look at it as a disease trying to choke you from fulfilling God's plan for your life, you won't do everything possible to get out of debt. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to teach you. How many of you despise debt? Oh, fear? Okay, I'm getting there. By the time I'm finished, it's going to be all of you. <laughs> Amen. We got to despise debt with everything in us. All right. No more. It says, uh, the rich rule. Everybody say, rule. Oh, this is heavy now. They actually rule uh, uh, over the poor, and the borrower is the what? Servant. Is the what? Servant. Come with me over to 1 Corinthians 7.23. 1 Corinthians 7.23. Is it right that we should be servants to somebody else? 1 Corinthians 7.23. Once you're there, please say amen. 1 Corinthians, Paul's writing now. He's talking about being a servant. And look at what he says. You were bought with the price. That's the blood of the Lamb. Purchased with the preciousness and paid for by Christ, the Amplified Bible says. Then do not yield yourselves up to become slaves to men. You were bought with the blood. You were bought so that you would be free. Why are you going back in bondage? Yeah, but Brother Nassau, I don't know if I can get a car without debt. You're right. You certainly won't get a new one. But which scripture says you have to start off with a new one? Which scripture says you've got to change your car every two years? Which scripture says that? Which scripture says a car can't go more than 40,000 miles? I got 80. You know it's time to change my car. I got 80,000. You know, I've had cars that have done 230,000 miles. Hello? Yeah, but you don't know what my neighbor got. Yeah, but he's in debt to here. Are you trying to do God's way or are you trying to do it the world's way? Ah, I don't know if I can buy a house without debt. You certainly can't buy uh, the one you're living in. But you know what? You might be able to buy a smaller one. I can't live in a smaller one. I got to buy one bigger than my dad. Why? Was there a scripture that says that? See, we want to start at the top. We don't want to start at the bottom. We want to start at the top. 
My brothers and sisters, I got lots of things to share with you this weekend. I've been praying over this because this is probably one of the most important broadcasts that's going to be on television around the world. Christians need to know what debt really is. Yes. And I'm going to give you a formula that if you will follow it, in seven years, you will be totally out of debt and be able to buy your next car cash. Anybody want to learn to do that? And if you'll stay with the formula, you'll buy your next house cash. What? Are you kidding me? No. I know somebody who did it. Who? Me. And he'll tell you how many times he had craft dinner and ramyun noodles at my house. Why? We chose to take every penny and kill a debt. We didn't know what the restaurants were serving because we never went there. But now that we've killed the debt, we can go to any restaurant we want. Hello? Are you getting a hold of this? Is it worth tightening your belt for a short period of time so you never have to tighten it for the rest of your life? Is it worth it? See, see, if you get a hold of this, you, the debt will never get a hold of you ever, ever again. We were never meant to be slaves for anybody. We, were, uh, we are now servants. Come with me to uh, um, Romans 12, 13. The New Testament, Romans 12, 13. No more are we going to stay in debt. We're coming out of debt. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Oh, yeah, I'm coming out. We ain't staying in there. Are you kidding me? We are not staying in there. Romans 13, 8. When Paula White and Rod Parsley got a, got a hold of this material that I'm teaching on debt, they said, you got to come do TV programs with us. We got to show people they got to get out of debt. And we've been doing that. I'm telling you, it's time for Christians to move forward. All right, Romans 13, 8. Once you're there, say amen. amen. Uh-huh. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. What does your Bible say? My Bible, what does your Bible say, Kelly Ashton? Romans 38. 13.8. You got it? 13.8. Yeah. Let no debt remain outstanding. Let no debt remain outstanding. All right. Anybody's Bible say anything different than that? What does your Bible say, Pastor Jesse? It says, oh, no one anything except to love one another. Uh-huh. Now, oh, no one anything. Uh, let me interpret that. Let me see. How many ways can you interpret that? Everybody say, oh, no man. Oh, no man. Anything. 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 What does that mean? <laughs> Everybody say, no dad. No dad. I mean, how confusing can this be? I don't know if it's God's will for me to be out of debt. Okay, let's read it again. Oh, no man. Anything. Now, so that means we are to owe how much to men? Nothing. Nothing. It's not how you interpret it. Just read the Bible. <laughs> this is the will of God. Why? It's in the Word of God. So how much should we owe men? Nothing. So if you're in debt, credit cards, you're in debt, car, you're in debt, house. The good news is over this weekend, you're going to learn to get out of debt. You're going to get these cars paid off. You're going to get your house paid off. How many of you would like to get your house paid off? You You're going to learn some practical things over this weekend. But you'll never apply them until you see debt as what it is. What is debt? Everybody say death grip. Death grip. Everybody say debt, death. Death. Disease. disease, devil. 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 You only say all start with D. Uh, <laughs> Come on now. Devil's disease on the church. We're not going there. We're supposed to owe no man anything but to love him. The only debt God allows you to owe is love. And the reason you owe it is because Jesus paid the price. And because he paid it, you owe it. I mean, you're going to have to love people whether you want to or not. The only thing debt that you owe is love. Not money. Everybody say love. Not money. Not money. Amen. That's the only debt we're supposed to owe is love. All right. Go back to uh, uh, Romans 12, verse 2. How do we do this? Here it comes. 
Romans 12, verse 2. It says here, Do not be conformed, do not be conformed to this world, this age fashioned after and adapted to its superficial customs. Hmm, that's the Amplified Bible. What are we doing? We're following the customs of the world. The world says, get into debt. The world says, if you don't have the cash, we'll give you payments. The world says, if you can't pay it off in 12 months, we'll give you 24. The world says, if you can't pay it off in 24, we'll give you 36. Right now, we'll give you 60. 72. Uh, 72. Uh, well, as long as you want, we'll give it to you. Amen. We'll give you a 30-year mortgage. Well, it doesn't matter. We have a death grip on you. You know what happens when you take 30 years to pay a 30-year mortgage? You bought the house three times. Come on now. You made somebody wealthy. That's twice uh, that house is worth could have gone into seed to fund the gospel around the world. Amen. And you would have got a harvest off that seed. But instead, you decided to buy the house three times. Something wrong with this picture. Why? Well, I didn't realize. You're realizing now. Death is a what? Disease. Death is a what? Disease. You're going to say it over and over again until you brainwash yourself and say, from now on, I know what death is. It is a what? Look at what it says. We are to transform our mind. Think differently. Everybody say, think differently. Think differently. Transform our mind by the renewal. The renewal. You're supposed to transform your thinking uh -huh, by the renewal. Everybody say, renewal. renewal. Now, that's a Greek word that means renovate. What does that mean? Rip out the way you're thinking and rebuild the walls of your thoughts. Amen. Everybody say, think differently. Think differently. We're going to have to think differently now. We've got to address debt at what it is. It is a disease from the devil to keep us broke. Everybody say, no more. No more. Huh. The, word, the Hebrew word slave, servant, is actually the word slave. When you become a servant to the lender, that is the same word as slave. You have now become a slave to the lender. Debt is a spirit that robs you of your time and of your money. Why? Because you're going to have to take two jobs now to pay your debts. Why? Robbed you of your time, robbed you of your money. Come with me to Luke 16, 13. Let's see what debt it really is. Luke 16, 13. Luke 16, 13. Once you're at Luke 16, 13, please say amen. amen. Hmm. No servant, turn to your neighbor and say, that's you, is able to serve two masters. Hmm. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and despise the other. But you cannot serve God and who? Mammon, the Syrian god of interest. <laughs> so when you're in debt, you are serving Mammon, which is the Syrian god of interest. Everybody's learning how to get into debt. Nobody teaching how to get out of debt. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the... And when you're in debt, the wealth of the Christian is laid up for the wicked. And God has a way of not only meeting your need, but He has a way of fulfilling the desires of your heart. Oh, that means it doesn't matter what the interest rates are, He's going to bless all the work of your hands. It don't matter what the uh, recession is, He's going to bless the work of your hands. It don't matter what mortgages are closing down, He's going to bless the work of your hands. Don't matter what financial institutions and banks are going out of business, He's going to bless the work of your hands. Driving debt out of your life. 
Get it today for your ministry gift of $30 or more. Order this powerful three DVD set by calling 1-888-947-3660 or visit us online at wisdomministries.org. We're receiving so many testimonies of God's miracle working power through this ministry outreach. People that are gaining out of debt. I would love to read them to you. I want to share some of them with you right now. Here's Donna in Limington, New Jersey. Donna writes, I've sown a significant seed into your ministry uh, to get out of debt. I received a harvest, listen to me now, $148,000 to clear my debt. Somebody shout praise God. Here's another one. Charlotte in Jacksonville, Florida writes, Dear Dr. Siddiqui, I sowed a $2,000 seed uh, uh, to clear my debts. We have now collected a total harvest, listen to this now, in two weeks, $75,570. $4.32. Somebody shout next. This is awesome. Here's Angie in West Columbia, South Carolina. Angie writes, uh, Dear Dr. Siddiqui, the, do the Lord told me to sow this seed into your ministry. I sowed $1,000 to get debt free and to date I have received a $95,000 debt cancellation. Oh my goodness, if God will do it for them, God will do it for you. My friends, without you, so many dear people are not hearing the word of God. I want you to ask the Lord what seed to sow now for your debt cancellation. You need to be one of these prayers reports. What do you need? I want you to indicate to me how much is your debt. Then I want you to obey God and sow in the measure you want to receive. The only reason they received in thousands is because they sowed in thousands. Remember what Jesus said? The measure you give determines determines the measure that comes back. Your debt cancellation is coming in your next seed. Sow the seed so I can pray with you and come into agreement. In fact, you know what? I'm going to pray with you right now. If you've been blessed with this teaching, sow the seed and this prayer will come onto your seed. I thank you, Lord. We've heard the word today. The Bible says if we've been blessed with the word, it's right to give. As we give this seed for our debt cancellation, Father, I agree with each and every one watching me for the 30, the 60, the 100 fold return on their seed. As they have believed, so shall they receive. We're children of faith. We believe, we receive when we pray. We seal it in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Remember, anytime you have a need, send me your prayer request. We want to believe with you and get, keep in touch with you uh, for God's best in your life. Send your praise reports as well. Don't forget to order your series today, Getting Debt Out of Your Life, Driving It Out of Your Life. There's so much in here that you need to get. Thank you for joining me today. This is Dr. Nasser Siddiqui saying I will see you next time. Winning with Wisdom. Tell a friend. Come experience the powerful ministry of Dr. Nasser Siddiqui at our next Wisdom Conference. The Holy Spirit, Governor of the Kingdom. Friday and Saturday, June 24th and 25th at the Wisdom Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This will be a conference full of teaching, worship, prayer, and impartation. The Holy Spirit, Governor of the Kingdom at the Wisdom Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Join us again next time and tell a friend to watch Winning with Wisdom with Dr. Nasser Siddiqui, Tulsa, Oklahoma.